to order. And I, anyone who can stand, I'd like to stand with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we have called order roll call, starting on my right. Councilperson Brett Byer. Councilperson Dick Dr. Graff. Mayor Jimmy John King. Councilperson Craig Anderson. Councilperson Jeremiah Olja. We're looking for approval of tonight's agenda. Any additions from staff? Any good. Pretty good. Any additions up here? Looking for a motion to approve. Move to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Now carries. Next, we'll go to approval of council meeting minutes of July 24th, 2018. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Any questions or discussion on them? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That will also carry. Takes us to finance and budget. We've got the accounts payable and the additional listing in front of you. Any questions from the table, please direct them to the finance director, Newmark. Motion to approve. We have a second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Well, will carry. That's going to take us to general business. And the I'm items. just flying through this week. This is fantastic. <laughs> Tonight on your general business, we will be having a public hearing. We'll do a public hearing ordering 2019 CIP Street Utilities Improvement Preparation Plans. I'm going to open the public, or excuse me, I'm going to close the regular meeting. I'm going to open the public hearing. Public hearing is now open. The public hearing will be on proposed 2019 street utility improvements that include 3rd Avenue Southeast, 400 block, 5th Street Southeast, 300 block, 4th Avenue Southeast, 400 and 500 blocks. The notice of this public hearing was published on July 24th, July 31st, Circle Star. Notices were sent to the individual property owners affected by the proposed project. Now, before we get right into the heart of this, I'm going to ask a couple things. I know we have a lot of people here, and that's wonderful. We appreciate that they can show up for these public hearings. I know you all have a lot of questions. I would like you to limit your questions to four minutes so we have time for everyone to have their questions. I appreciate it if we start having the same question after question after question that we move to a different one, or if that would work for you folks. So. With that being said, next I'll go to Jenna. Do you have anything to add to this? I have a presentation. All right, that'd be great. We'll watch the presentation first, and we'll be your guys' turn. All right. Good evening. Um, I'm Jenna Hall. Uh, it's also 36 foot feet wide in a 66 
foot right away, there is a portion of it that widens on the north end. Um, again, you have severe pavement deterioration. Your water main was also installed in 1957. Um, the north portion of 4th Avenue has a 4-inch water main and the south portion has a 6-inch water main. Um, you also have a large history of water main breaks in the area. Um, and there is a break in your, the roadway. The roadway is not through. Um, there's some turnaround problems in the design that's out there. And it's problematic for snow plowing and emergency vehicles. This street southeast, um, connecting the two we previously talked about, has the same age. Um, again, deterioration of the pavement. Um, you can see in the picture a little bit of drainage problem due to sediment or deterioration. I also have a four inch water main um, and large history of breaks. I know there were at least four breaks just in the past year within this entire project area. Um, so that leads to a lot of inconveniences to all of you. Our recommended improvements for Third Avenue, uh, we would remain at 36 feet wide we actually proposed to shift it just a few feet uh, to the west. Um, we would replace all the storm sewer, the catch basins, manholes, um, replacing all the pavement, curb and gutter, driveway approaches, add sub drain um, to further the life of the pavement, getting the water from underneath the pavement surface. Uh, replace your water main your hydrants, valves, and services up to the right of way. Um, your sanitary sewer, main, manholes, and services would also be replaced up to the right of way line. We would propose, we are proposing to add sidewalk to the east side of the road. Um, our typical right of way um, for most of our city streets is 66 feet wide. It, that width will hold sidewalks on both sides of the road with our 36 foot wide roadway. However, for this um, street, there are some houses that are built, have been built on the west side of the road that are within 10 feet of the right-of-way line. Um, that is not the same issue on the east side of the road. And Having a sidewalk within 10 feet of the front of the house is not very convenient. Um, it also will cut off driveways. So that is why it is being proposed to go on the east side. Um, we would also vacate this, uh, the stub to the south. Um, we would remove the roadway and rebuild the driveway to access the properties that um, front. Southeast. Proposed to do the same as on 3rd Avenue, with the one difference being adding sidewalks to both sides of the street. 4th uh, Avenue does not have the same issues for homes and setbacks. Um, and with the proposal to connect both ends of the street and make it a through street, um, providing sidewalk on both sides of the street to make connections in the future around town um, is what we would propose to do. Um, in order to do this portion, we would need to acquire some right-of-way to connect both portions. If that right-of-way is not acquired, um, we would need to re-talk about it but I would not recommend doing the south portion of Fourth Avenue until the right of the way could be acquired. Fifth Street Southeast has a narrower right of way um, of only 50 feet. Um, we would propose 
to remove parking on one side of the street and have a 30 foot wide roadway. There would also be proposed to have sidewalk on the north side um, and all of the utilities would be replaced, just like the other two. Um, with adding sidewalk to the north side, we would shift the roadway slightly south. I believe it was about three to four feet. Um, and that would actually aid in our design um, of redoing the corner between 3rd Avenue and 5th Street. And this is one option <coughs> of looking into how to reconfigure that intersection or that corner. Um, the driveways that are there. This is showing that shift. This is showing that proposed shift of both roadways and the proposed sidewalk. Um, as you can tell, it is a longer radius around that corner, um, which will aid in the snow plowing and actual vehicles not needing to come to a normal stop to make the turn. However, it's still about a 10 mile an hour radius that your vehicle could take. Um, and this was done with talking with Sean about best operations for maintenance of the roadway. This is just a picture showing the acquisition that would be needed um, and also give you an idea of what the proposed improvements would be like in that area. The total estimated cost in the project, just over $2 million. That includes all of construction, engineering, legal work um, to do the entire project. <coughs> the estimated assessed portion is three hundred and seventy thousand. Our next steps, if this, if we get the order to um, start the improvement design, um, we would come out for a topographic survey of the area, um, collecting all of our information for design work. Uh, and then we would prepare, we would make the design and prepare the construction documents through the winter. We would propose to approve the plans and the specifications in January. Um, and we would receive bids sometime in February or March, uh, depending on the timeline of acquisition. Um, we would start the construction in the spring. Uh, we would look for substantial construction completion of, in September of next year. Um, the final assessment hearing would, would start the process in September of next year and be finalized in October. Um, and that first year of construction, you'd see all the construction done except for that final lift of pavement. Um, we put the pavement down in two lifts. We leave the final lift off for one pre-thaw season to see if there's any issues, any settlement issues that we need to go back and repair before we put that final lift on. Um, and you would look for the final completion of your pav the pavement in June of 2020. I'm done. All right, we're going to go back to you guys, the public, and we're going to open up the questions. Who wants to be the first one? And we'd like you to, <coughs> as you stand, state your name and address for the record. I got one in back. Hey, Jimmy, I'm Dave Smith. I live at 512, it's 512 Fourth Avenue. Uh, hometown kid moved back two years ago. My question on this proposed proposed uh, project, I realize the street's got to get fixed, and I know you got to deal with the uh, acquisition, but this meeting tonight is for informational purposes, Jim, is the proposed set in stone. I don't think there's anybody that I've talked to on my street or the street over that, that would like sidewalks in their front yard. 
they don't see any reason for it. And I just want to know if, if by us t talking and, and stating our opinions on the sidewalk, if that changes your mind or if this is set in stone, we might as well go home. That's that's kind of what my question would be. The easy answer would be to tell you to go home, but um, that's okay. <laughs> I, I don't like it. It's not set. It's I, I'm not going to sit here and say it is set in stone. I'm not saying anything about this project is set in stone. Yep. I'm not saying the acquisition is. I'm not saying the sidewalks or any of the design. This is all proposed. And that's why it's your meeting tonight to state your opinions yep. so we know what the feelings are. That's I, that's a fair answer. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Mike? Um, Mike Thompson, 519 Fourth Avenue Southeast. Um, I'm one of the lucky ones that this is my second go round with the CIP project. Um, <laughs> because I decided to move. But anyway, um, <laughs> back in the late 90s, and I don't remember the exact year when my first street was done, um, then Mayor <coughs> Chuck Murphy asked me to participate in a special committee to look at the sidewalk issue. And we spent numerous nights driving around Stewartville, and at the time, the thing that I noticed, we drove around a lot of neighborhoods that had sidewalks. And the thing that stood out to me was people weren't using them. We drove around all kinds of neighborhoods that had sidewalks, and people were riding their bikes in the street, joggers were in the street, walkers were in the street when there was a sidewalk right there. I think in new developments and new areas, sidewalks are the way to go. That's perfect. Um, but in these older neighborhoods, when you're trying to put them in, I just sometimes I just don't think it makes sense. And even if the land acquisition on 4th does go through, where is that sidewalk going to go? It's going to go to 6th Street where on the north side of the road, there's not a sidewalk there. So you're still forcing people to cross the street or whatever. So to me, I don't have a problem with paying my portion of the project. I think the, the, the process that was put in place back when 7th Street Northeast was done and the portion that we had to pay was fair and it was equitable and that's what I fought for at that time was let's just make sure it's fair and equitable and I believe that we did that and I'm willing to pay my share, I just feel like we need to be smart about these sidewalks and not just cram them in to, to these older existing neighborhoods where they never had them before <coughs> um, and where they don't connect to certain areas that have sidewalks now or pathways to the schools. I know we're close to the school and I know that's part of why we want to do that, but to me I just don't see where that sidewalk's gonna go and where what it's really gonna benefit when I saw what I saw back you know, 15 years ago. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Rose Wendt, 531 4th Avenue, Southeast. We live on the eight houses there that's the dead end. Now, we have been there for many, many years. It's an older development. We never had sidewalks there. I don't see the reason why we need sidewalks now for the simple reason we don't have that much front yard. If you're going to put in a sidewalk, we're going to lose our tree in the front, the neighbor's going to lose their tree in the front, and we're going to have them walking very close to the house. And which I don't, I think it's, it's, there's no need for it. We've never had sidewalks all this time, and I think. I think they should be put on Fifth Avenue where the kids are, are where the school is. So, thank you. Jay Stoffer, 524 4th Avenue Southeast. Um, I, I agree with her with the sidewalks. We'll cut into our privacy in our front yard and stuff if we put them on. And I'd also like to know if they do go through with the street, if they're going to change where they have the uh, fire hydrants, if they will be adjusted. Because I'm on the end of the dead end, and it's in my property if we put them on the uh, property line, or if you just eliminate that one and put it down farther. That's a good question. You know what you're talking about? You have a very young on that. On, on, the, on, uh, on the east side. <coughs> we would adjust that one, however, we do need to look at the layout of all hydrants. Um, I do need to have hydrants Yeah, I'm just looking at them. Um, 
I'm just looking at moving it four feet so it's on the property line so I can get the full benefit of my driveway. started a health program for cities, municipalities, counties. Um, Olmstead County did the same, and you've maybe heard of it as a SHIP program. And so our, county, or our city uh, became members of that to join in the health uh, benefits, uh, uh, wellness uh, type of thing. And of course, one of the things, because we have our trail system, and it seems widely uh, beneficial, or we get good comments on it, uh, one of the things was then, how do you connect the trails with all the neighborhoods? And so one of the things we started looking at, of course, was sidewalks, even in areas that have never had them. And as all of you know, neighborhoods evolve. Right now, some neighborhoods might be more of our senior members. Uh, but as years go by, there might be more young families. And so one of the things the city did to take a look at that was, if you have some youngsters that are learning to walk or ride a trike or a bike, it just seemed from a city perspective, maybe sidewalks are a little more safer for them to use, or at least the city is providing that safe route um, for their benefit. And we you know uh, a lot of comments have come in, a lot of our residents don't use them. Um, second uh, area is uh, the young families, of course, again, with um, uh, pushing buggies, strollers, uh, things like that. Again, from a city perspective, we just felt that that provides at least a safe route for them rather than being in the street. And I think the last thing that we, or not the last thing, the next item was, now that uh, our uh, society has gotten more mobile with uh, motorized wheelchairs and the scooters that a lot of senior citizens use or disabled folks use, again, the city just felt maybe if we're providing safe routes, it's better for those units or mobilized units to be on a sidewalk rather than out in the street. And then the last thing is, and it did get touched on a little bit here, is connection routes. Um, uh, in subdivisions, we do uh, get them started. It works out great. When you move into a subdivision, you know the sidewalk's there. For those of you that have had uh, neighborhoods without, you know your neighborhood has gotten along without them. But one of the things we've looked at uh, in a school situation is to try, if we can, when these kinds of projects are done, can there be new connections made? If we keep putting it off, there'll never be the connection. So we at least like to review a proposed sidewalk when these projects are done, because the whole street uh, gets uh, revised and changed. And so you can put them in, for the most part, within the right of way. And so uh, in this particular uh, project, uh, the connection length would be over to um, 4th and 6th, uh, as was alluded to. Uh, 4th route, you know, used to go down to Main Street. Uh, the 6th route goes up to the school. And so as we were looking at possible connections for neighborhoods, that's why it's being looked at in some of the places here, to try to start or continue on that connection process. So hopefully that helps a little bit on why we take a look at it. Uh, obviously our community is, has looked at the issue both ways and a lot of residents um, have commented both ways. Some like them, some don't. So I know some of the council has had some ideas about it and I guess feel free to add to that if you best your desire. I'll touch on a little bit of what Bill was saying. Before I was elected to this, the council at the time found it a good decision and I feel it was all the new developers have to put 
new developments have to have sidewalks. It's an ordinance, they have to do it. And all of a sudden you got developments with sidewalks basically going nowhere. They felt just because 40, 50 years ago that wasn't an ordinance in place, just as he's saying, now may be the time to make these connections, start making, try and get them all hooked up. So eventually there is a sidewalk connecting to some of these other developments and connecting to everywhere in town for people to travel. Now it's, it's something we've always looked at all of them. It's, most of them we've been able to come to a agreement with the homeowners, but it's something we'll always listen to and it's something we're still looking at. That's uh, my two cents worth of Dick or Brent, you want to say? Clearly, I don't have a sidewalk in front of my house because I'm overweight. So uh, apparently the health care doesn't work. But my, my two cents on this are that uh, I do agree that he brought up a lot of good points on sidewalks. And it, it is a contentious issue all the time. And we try to look at it and see what makes sense. And I'm not a big fan of government shoving anything down your throat. Quite frankly, I think uh, we'd all be better off if we didn't rely on government to, for as much as we do. So looking at a neighborhood like yours, I tend to think it'd be a tougher sell for me to say you have to have a sidewalk. I mean, I, your, your front yards, my front yard is more important to me than a sidewalk. Um, I think it's a big push to have them on Fifth Avenue to get up to Bonner, and then they can walk across the street. Um, and Sixth Street, or Sixth Street's got it on the south side, but they, I don't know. I, I get where you guys are coming from on it. Uh, I think sometimes some people are a little overzealous and anti-change. Uh, clearly, I'd rather see a little kid a real little kid riding the walking on a sidewalk than in the street. And not a real big fan of the people that you said that were not using it and chose to do their night walks in the street. I still don't like that. But I don't know that that's enough. Uh, if you guys, if 80% of you guys are saying we don't want sidewalks, I'm not really the type that would want to cram it down your throat. Steve? Steve Black is 514 4th Avenue Southeast. Have you put sidewalks in any place you know, where these projects have been so far that wasn't there to begin with? We're doing it again this year, all the way down 12th, up there by the you know that street okay. runs down. Okay. There'll be sidewalks there, and we're replacing sidewalks where they were. Last year we put them down on 6th, we only did one side though, it was proposed two sides, we only did one side. We've done, in the 10 years I've been here, we've done it on more than we haven't done. Areas where they Why jump. didn't they do it from 4th Street down to Highway 30? I asked that question. I asked that same question. <laughs> I, I, I did, Steve. I asked the same thing. Are the sidewalks part of our assessment then? In other words, if we don't have sidewalks, is it going to be the last? The city's got a city fund to put the sidewalks in. Yeah, maintain them in the wintertime. There's not going to be much of a boulevard there. That's pretty obvious. Oh, so a wide boulevard would there be? Approximately, I can't, I'm not going to pin generate down the exact number of nights it's proposed. <laughs>
And now you're telling me it's going to move two or three feet south. Just because you want to put in a sidewalk. And actually, the movement of the road helps over that curve. It doesn't help me one bit. And I see no need for it. And I'm about the only one around about over here. He's from the same street. The two of the one of folks, or two people that they were just moved the last few days. But is there, I mean, you're telling me they're going to move this sidewalk. They're going to put in this curve, I mean, the street. They're going to put in this curve. They're going to be moving two or three feet in my direction. And basically, I agree we got nobody else on that street to speak up against it. So, I need more reasoning for it than a sidewalk or because they want to put a curve coming around the corner. Especially when I've been talking to City Hall for the last two, three weeks about this. I think they're starting to be sick of coming in there. But I'm trying to get ideas of what they're doing. And this is one of the things I was told that the road would be moved. They were basically, in fact, I was told it might even get a little shorter because it's going to be a narrow road. The road is only going to be 30 instead of 36. Now you're telling me the road's going to be narrow, but yet they're going to move it from the south. Wait a minute. That just doesn't cut it with Yes, uh, then my another question is, is, now when they start this project with this road business, and we're not <coughs> going to be able to get into our garages, where are we going to have to park our vehicle? On 6th Street? It looks like they're mad at it. For you, yes. There's a There are times during construction where you will be able to access your driveways. However, there are times where you we're digging out in front of your house. We have a trench that's 12 feet deep. Um, you will not have access. When we have, are taking out the road and taking out the old base um, and sub-base materials in order to build a new road, you will have a cut of close to four feet. Um, so their vehicles will not be able to access during time. However, when they are not digging in front of you, uh, they are required to put back the gravel and to maintain access into the portion of your driveway that has not been removed. And then for garbage and recycle, where do we take the cans? Do we take them to 6th Street? For garbage and recycling, you will take it to the end of your driveway, just like you normally do. And the contractor is required to collect all garbage and recycling, bring it to where it can be collected, and then return it at the end of the day. And we should we should mark our cans so we make sure we get the right ones back. <laughs> You're <just kidding>. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look the lid. Look the lid. You write your address on the inside of the cap. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. The meal boxes will be put down to close the spot, and this year they use cattle troughs and pump mounted them in there. They're, so they're down around outside so of the So we just, just got the mailbox and put in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the contractor will work with the Postal Service on the bus station <coughs> to move the mailboxes and they will relocate them. The, the ones you guys are all in your house, it doesn't matter. No, it's, no. All on, it's all on the yard. The ones that are on the houses will stay in the houses. The ones that are out on the road will be moved to the closest spot outside of the work zone so the male people can deliver and get actually safe. Okay, that was the second time. Can I make one more comment? Oh, yeah, sure, no problem. Yep. Yeah. Nathan Rito, 415 4th Avenue, South Um I thought I'm on record that I'm against the boulevard and sidewalk also. For my personal home, it's going to take out very large mature trees if it's that far into the yard. Yeah. And then a second question, or a question, um, what we're doing, the water main and sewer and stuff in the street, to us as homeowners, is there going to be an option to write a new water line to our homes? Because they're probably as old as what's out there in the street. Is there going to be a, a thought sure. of that? We don't include that in the... I wouldn't expect you to pay your own expense. Um, it, and it's up to every contractor of whether or not they have this scheduled to take on the work. Okay. If it's something you want to look at, um, I would actually contact you, a plumber on your own to get well, 
just thought if it was dug out, there'd be a, a discounted labor at that point if a guy, because if you're going to say it breaks and everything's put down, it's $6,000. If they got the road dug out, it's 1500 bucks. Bucks, what she's saying is normally the contractors we hire won't touch your line, but if you want to hire somebody while it's not, it you can time. coordinate somebody to come to your place okay. at that time. That's how I do That's how right. I do it. That's the, the water option. will be shut off. You'll be on temporary service for quite a stretch before they even are working on yours. So you would have a stretch for them where your service would be decommissioned anyway. Okay. And will we be notified when that water gets shut off? So we'll oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And we'll coordinate best we can with you guys when people want this stuff. We'll, we'll work as best water. we can with the contractors and try and make it work. But it doesn't always work, but we try. Right. For water shutdowns, um, we'll have to get If they do chase off at 524 4th Avenue Southeast, if they do decide to acquisition that land, could they build some type of road so we'd have access out of that way so everybody wouldn't have to go out the north side? You know, the, the trees and the plot of land that's keeping us from going through the road. Yes. Is there a way that they would? If we, if we acquire the right of way, we are proposing but I mean before no, the construction, construction starts, so, so we, we would have another outlet, so if they start on one end, people could use the other end, you know, and then finish one end and go out the other end type thing. Yep, you know, I don't know if they plan on starting on 3rd Avenue, 4th Avenue. It will, it will depend on how the design goes and how I can lay out the phasing of the project, um, but we can add in there a requirement to get, uh, the per, um, clearing and grubbing done yeah, something put down so we can get through yeah. if that's the case. Okay, uh, Mike Thompson again, 519 with that. So it's just a just a general comment. Again, having been through this, I will say when the project was done on my previous street, Seventh Street Northeast, I don't know if I remember a day I couldn't get in my driveway. I thought the between the city crews and the contractors that were doing it did a great job, and I really. I don't remember a day I could not get to my driveway um, for parking or whatever. So if that reassures anybody or not. Um, and, and just overall through that whole process, I know it was kind of an inconvenience and it was kind of pain in the butt, but having a nice new street at the end, it was well worth it. And I, I really do think the city and the contractors did a great job through the whole process. So uh, I know we, you, you get a lot of complaints, but I just want to commend everybody because it's, it's not an easy project to do, I get that. And I'm just looking forward to having a nice new street when it's all done. Yeah, I won't disagree with Mike, these are wonderful contractors to work with. They've kept everything open as well as they can, but it's a big problem we have sometimes with Mother Nature. Yeah. We ran into that a little bit this year. Carrie Bernard, 510 for Madison Southeast. And I'm also against the sidewalks, especially with an eight-foot boulevard and a five-foot sidewalk. It's going to be removing a lot of church trees. You talk about sidewalks being for a healthy choice, so I don't feel that removing the church trees is a healthy choice for us as well. Trees are very important. Yeah, so, yes. And also, a place to put snow. It's just about impossible to shove it on our driveways with the tiny front yards we currently have. Everything's packed in these front yards, and there's no place to put snow. So now having to maintain a sidewalk on top of that is going to be a real hardship. 
And the other thing I'm wondering is those of us have some pumps that are discharged, have discharge lines, is that part of the proposed fee to tie those in? If it's currently running out to the street, the contractor will tie them in. If it is not currently running out to the street, you will, you will stub out a service connection that you can run your If you want to connect, run yours out there before we get through the project, and then they'll make that connection for you, and it'll save you some work on your own. Is that that right-of-way line? That yeah. Where Just get out into the right-of-way. Right. 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 It actually stays at the back. The one foot line that finished curve. Oh. Depends on whether or not there's side. Side off would be at the right-of-way line. It would be the connection point. If there's no side walk, And once the subgrade is put in, you you cannot run a hose out to the street after that. We won't allow that. So now is the time to do it. So where should we run them to if we currently have one that's in the middle of our yard? We don't know what's happening with sidewalks. Do you have a beaver system that scores up all the middle of the yard? Or yeah. Is that what you have? Well, you'll have time to know what we're doing. I mean, there'll be, there's another public hearing I mean, with, with the contractors and everything at the beginning of the project, and you'll know what's happening. Because that'll you'll have the final plan. So. Well, we have a neighborhood meeting. If this project would go in, in uh, about March, we'll have a neighborhood meeting, and you'll we'll, we come to, um, to the civic center, and we have all the mapping of each of the lots there, and you can actually see what they're going to be doing and how it, you know everything is related to your home. Great. <coughs> Greg House, 604 La Point Drive Southeast. Um, lifelong Stripful resident. I grew up in this area, north side of 4th Avenue, south side of 4th Avenue. Um, highly want that street to go through and I recommend that. Um, I'm also a 40 year veteran of the fire department. Um, it's also a safety. Uh, more than anything, we just had an incident uh, approximately two to three weeks ago. Call come in, individual down. Um, and it's in that gray area. We don't know because everything comes in as an address now. We don't know names. 20 years ago, we had names. We knew where we were going, but everything comes as an address. So we we're sitting there trying to decide, are we going down 6th Street? Are we going up 4th um, Street by the elevator to catch 4th Avenue? So I'm driving the truck, and I hear the deputy coming, so I waited. And to see if the deputy went by the fire hall, do we go down 6th Street, come in on the south side, or do we go up north by the elevator, come in on the north side? He went by the fire hall, so great. He knew where he was going. Um, we followed him. He turned on 4th Avenue going north. He went the wrong direction. So as a safety, if that had been in the middle of the night and a person's home was on fire and your family was in there, uh, this was a medical condition. It wasn't a life-threatening medical condition, but we went all the way around Fifth Avenue and come back in again. So that's where I feel it's very important. This is not the first time it's happened, but it happened two weeks ago at a residence here. That's where it's very important to have that street going through. Um, leaves, alleviate some of the traffic on Fifth Avenue. And again, it's a safety thing uh, for everybody uh, out there. So my two cents on that. I've got an opinion about running 4th Street through there. Okay, Don, give us your name and address. 601 4th Avenue Southeast, Steigerwald. And uh, the Ware family lived there forever, okay? They're the reason the 4th Street ain't connected. Well, I think it should not be connected because he's going to have to go across the street back and forth to get to his other property. And I don't think that's a good thing. And the poor guy has lived there all his life. Why change it for him now? Because he will be gone someday. Then you can do any damn thing you want with it. But for me, I think it should not go through. Rec Unger, 523 4th Avenue Southeast. My, uh, Danny Ware is my neighbor. Um, 
I've been there for nine years. I, I admire the guy. He's up every day in the crack of dawn, working in his garden. That piece of property has been his for forever. Like somebody said 60 years. Um, I don't know where we stand with trying to uh, access that that piece of property, but I want it noted that I'm uh, I'm second seconding uh, his opinion on not putting the street through. Second thing is I'm not going to hash on the sidewalks, but I oppose to that because it's not going to add any value to my house. It's just going to uh, it's going to devalue my property. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, and I don't know if that parcel from Danny's land, if it doesn't go through, are we going to have to readdress the sidewalk and everything else all over again later, later down the line? Well, it'll change the whole proposal, the whole correct. Address, correct. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Dennis Brent, 531 4th Avenue, Southeast. I'd like to add to what Greg said about safety. My, hot, my computer room overlooks the south end of 4th Avenue of the dead end. And I see garbage trucks backing in, backing out, dang near every day. All kinds of big delivery trucks coming in, turning around. Other people that are uh, go up there are lost, and they got to turn around. We've had one dog run over in the neighborhood for that. You know, will there be a kid run over pretty quick? To me, that's more important than sidewalks. Gloria and I are. I'm from Sturville. My main name was Rager. I bought my parents' house. My dad passed away. Mother said, isn't it good we're going down to City Hall? Mayor Jimmy get John King. We're not having the story down. When I was a young girl, I looked up to Danny Ware. I looked up to Jim Mayor Jimmy John King and Cheryl Rager. But it really hurt me the, the other day. Here come two semis coming flying down the road. My son with special needs was in the back backyard. I'm thinking about if that street goes in, you're gonna have tractors coming in and I'm for the farmers. I have a farm man next door across the street, Elmer, Rent, Elmer Wemp. My two doors over is my cousin, Dave Sackett, wonderful farmer, you know what I'm talking about, Mayor Jimmy John. But when I saw that truck coming down the street, if that gate would even been open and a little girl was playing, I whistled right out. This is sad to have a street go through. A little child's going to get a gut, and I'm going to be the first to say it to you. I dealt with autism all my life with my son. I've questioned God numerous of times. I've been to church on my knees, and it's bothered me in the last few months that we should have even a speed bump like the fellow said over here. The traffic and the trucks are coming and going and it's up to you to decide. So maybe if it was your grandbaby, what would you do? Thank you, Mayor. Without the acquisition? 
Um, it does talk about with and without the acquisition um, and not doing the self dead end of fourth if the acquisition does not happen. Um, so it gives you the variability of both of those. Um, with any changes um, that we would make to the proposal, um, I guess it'd be up to the council and city staff uh, to ask for another meeting, informational meeting. Um, it would be advisable before plans and specs have been approved in January. So we, if that is what everybody would like, I would suggest it being in the November, December time. Margaret Shepner, uh, 518 Fifth Street Southeast. Um, I'm against the sidewalks. That's fine. My other concern we brought up once about parking when the streets are impassable. <coughs> and there's quite a few elderly people that have problems with their health. And I have a husband that has a very bad heart. So we have 15% of his heart. And he can't even walk a block. Any suggestions what I can do there? Well. Yep. Um, this current project, we had a couple residents come in and specifically talk to us about family medical issues. So what we did is we've told the contractor who gets the job to work with us and then uh, all the safety agencies. So if there is an emergency between our city crews, the contracting crews, uh, for the most part, as the mayor pointed out, have really lent a good hand in addressing emergencies or getting a stretcher across yards if, if it's that type of thing. I know we've had contractors actually lift uh, residents over to a vehicle. He couldn't yeah. walk a block. He can't walk a block. Or two blocks. No, he can't. Yeah. Then, what, we, what then what we've what's done... What's the possibility if I talk to the elevator if he's let me park behind my backyard and pop down to the garden? <laughs> if they yeah. let me park and so I've got a back gate there. One, one thing we've seen in all the projects, which is really neat, um, neighborhoods working together to help each other. And so what we've seen in uh, these past 10 years of projects, if your street is over here, the neighbors on the street right behind you have been very good or accommodating yeah, about helping and, and getting people through. And so we would hope that that would be the same with all of you neighbors. You'll try to give each other a hand. Usually neighbors that aren't in the project are good about it as well. I think we've only had two instances where a neighbor got upset that somebody was cutting across. But otherwise, the vast majority of our citizens have been very good about helping those types of situations. And as the city engineer, Jen, pointed out, the contractors do, and as Mike pointed out too, they do try to leave um, access uh, pretty much as much as they can throughout the project. You know, with the exception of your driveway being poured, or the day they're pulling out the driveway, well, I've those got are, kind of, when you're going to dig yeah. it out, I'm going to have a like this. They'll, they'll put a rock kind of ramp in to try to help neighborhoods um, or different driveways, depending on the geography. But weather can play a part. We saw it this year, and I don't want people to get false hopes because we can run into times, and then it creates ten times more headache because people are so upset thinking they were going to have total less. We have to be honest with it. They have a street taken off and we're down to dirt, and if we get rain on it, it's there can be a week you can't get access, and there's just, we're going to do it this year. And there's nothing we can do about it. There's no way we can have them put rock back down just to get through an evening you couldn't afford to do it. So just so everyone's aware that weather plays a big part. I understand that, but the nature has their own problem. This is actually a question. Um, Cassidy, go 415 4th Avenue. I'm against making it the first street. Uh, we bought our house um, a year and a half ago, in December. And when we moved in, we were very excited because it was a dead end street. Like we have young kids, we have two young girls, and a, a nine-year-old boy who rides his bike everywhere. So I just wanted to say that I'm against that, um, just because of the increased traffic that it would make. Um, and then also. In this instance, I'm for the trees and against the sidewalks. Normally, I'm for the sidewalks, but there's so many trees that are going to be lost, mature trees that make our neighborhood. How far back are your trees? They would, yeah. Looking at that picture, you would take out our maple and our birch tree in our front yard. Yeah. The it maple tree pretty much, much covers our whole road. That's our shape. And it's not just us either. It is a lot of people. A lot of trees. A lot of trees. I didn't imagine, but I'm guessing if it's at 15 people we're talking, it's going to be right through the middle of the 
And I don't know about you guys, but when I take down the bowling tree I had in the backyard last year, because the wires were blowing through it, and it was disrupting someone's service, and I had to take down a 100-year-old tree, I'm like, well, bury these cables. Let's do that. <laughs> One thing I will tell you, Diane, and for some of you folks that maybe don't know it, I agree with you. There's a lot of truck traffic on Fifth, and one of the reasons for that, that is a truck route. Yep. yep. Now, we don't, don't plan on making this a truck route, so we're going to be talking about a law enforcement problem if you guys see a problem. If you see speeders, and we've run into this, we've had neighborhoods demand four way stop signs in their neighborhood for all the people coming through speeding. The only people who got tickets was the neighbor of the people that was complaining. <laughs> <laughs> so don't always look at everybody else. Sometimes it's what's going on in your own neighborhood. If there's a problem with noise or speeding or squealing or something like that. I'm just pointing that out. Fifth is a truck route. Sixth is a truck route. Mm -hmm. We do not plan on making this a truck route. I just want that clear. I don't want everybody thinking we're going to send every. And I'll tell you what. I'll be the first one if I can find out if there is trucks on there that will have the law enforcement up there. The law enforcement I am very good. Not terms, but first name basis. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make that very clear right now on that part. As far as burying all the wires in this town, that has been discussed. Now you're talking some money. Now you're talking about tearing up yards if you think you're upset because the tree came down. Because they do have an easement in there that's theirs to do with as they please. If you have them tree in their easement, we can't do a thing about that. That is their right to take that tree down. That is something you have to work out with the electric company. They have worked it out with people, and the agreement is when the tree comes down on the line and send up this side of town loses power, you will pay the crews that come in to replace these lines. That's part of the reason that's done that way. We don't have any say about that. That's the power provider. As far as sidewalks, we're still looking at them. I'm not going to. I'm hearing a lot of dissent about them, but if you want to look at this logically, everything starts somewhere, someday, someplace. Things have happened in my lifetime too that I don't agree with because I just bought that yesterday and now it's on sale for half price. I mean, well, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Everything starts as a starting place. Can I go back to Jenna? Because I did yep, forget. Yep, you oh, forgot to answer your that. question. All right. So, oh, so do I need my name on? No, we know we are. All right. <laughs> sure, two years here. Dave would have left the room when you stood up. No, I can't. Okay. Did I hear you say two times that you would not recommend doing the our road if it doesn't go through? It's the south side. Yes, the south. No, just the, the south, south, south. The south the side. The south side. Like where, where the winds live and things like that. Okay. We wouldn't so, touch that. Okay, so if the sidewalks, for instance, it seems, I don't know, I don't know if you take a vote or what, if it seems like that's not going to go through, that has no effect on getting the roads done. And, oh, all right. Because I just want to clarify. Uh -huh. You wouldn't recommend us doing, getting that done. Okay. No, I wouldn't recommend it being done because I would recommend doing it when the road actually went through. Um, to do, to do come and do build 66 feet of roadway at some given time in the advanced future is not feasible. It needs to be part of a bigger project to be feasible. Okay. Then going back to that last question, sorry, I'm not I think um, then going back to your last question about the sidewalks, and you said 30 feet, 5 feet, is, okay. So how did, how did you come up with that? So the 8-foot boulevard is based on um, what we have found to be the best width of a boulevard for the length of your driveway so you don't have cars bottoming out. It also provides, because um, when you have a driveway section, it's coming in at one slope, your sidewalks at a different slope, um, and then your driveway goes up at another slope again. Um, in order to stay within our standards, um, so that you don't end up with a 15 to 20 percent apron for your driveway that you're going to bottom your car out every time you come in and out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it'll be better. <laughs> uh, and with the design and placement of the sidewalk, we look at your driveway.
driveway going into your house, if we need to fix grades, we go to where we need to fix the grades to make your driveway the best we can. Um, so the eight foot is based off of that, but it's also based off of snow storage. It is for the plows to have a place to put the snow so that they aren't dumping it on the sidewalk so that you then have to clear their entire windrow of snow. Um, like Main Street. Correct. And we have shortened those up some. We, we have some areas where we have six foot boulders. <coughs> but the more you shorten it up, the steeper your driveway gets. And the more and you get snow. More, more heat from snow onto your sidewalk. Okay. Um, so to fit within the public's right of way um, with the size of street we have, I, it's proposed to have an eight foot boulevard so that. It's most convenient for snow removal for your driveways, but like Sean said, we have shortened to a six foot boulevard. Your driveway will get steeper. Um, and you will, during a large snowfall, it'll be more likely that a windrow of snow will be on the sidewalk that then you need to go clear. So, yeah. And so you understand the sidewalks the have to meet ADA requirements and disability. Uh, and they can only have a certain slope, so they're not poured as part of your driveway. A sidewalk is poured solid the whole way through, and your driveway is poured to the sidewalk to maintain. And they have to be five foot, or if we go down to four foot, then we have to do bump outs every, and it changes. Every 200 feet. Yeah. Um. And that's all handed down to us, not our decisions. That's stuff that federal. That's federal regulation, um, and it it is in a resolution and has been um, adopted by almost every city within the nation, um, but also Stuartville, to look at complete streets. And it's not just looking at for the cars, but it is looking for the safety, convenience, and comfort of motorists, cyclists, pedestrians, including people requiring mobility aids, transit riders, neighborhood residents of all ages and abilities, um, when you're making a plan for a street. So if you guys decide to go with the sidewalks, question for you. Do our trees come down? If some will. Um, and there's also another policy within Stuartville of no boulevard trees. So trees within right away. No new ones. No new ones. Roll. No new ones. Roll. No new ones. Roll. No new ones. You've had a couple. If I can see somebody else wants to, we'll get back. Oh, fine. I won't forget that. Dory, can I see somebody else? Yeah. If anybody else wants to speak before I'm going to let you know, let Rose have one more talk and Dory have one more talk. If somebody else would like to speak, we'll let them speak now. Ken Munson, 421 uh, Fourth Avenue. Um, I have several questions. I don't know if I can remember all of them. Um, but um, I'm, I'm against the sidewalk idea as well. I don't know if you would even consider it, like on 4th Avenue, where you're proposing sidewalks on both sides, would you consider a sidewalk on one side? And, and I'm not, not proposing that idea, but just the thought. Uh, and I'm sure if you did that, you'd put it on my side. <laughs> <laughs>
by breaking things down a little more. Um, try and get the best number in front of you before we have a final design and final figures. This is an estimate. I have, a, I have a, a multiple car garage, so I have a wide driveway. Will the drive access in the curbing be adjusted to the wide drive? It's a little narrow right now. Um, the maximum width of a, of, of a curb cut for a driveway, for residential driveway, is 24 feet. So if you want adjustments made, uh, we can adjust driveways up to that width. Uh, not if, if you're wider than that, you would need a variance. Uh, reasons why we stick with 24 feet is if you get a wider driveway, then again we have problems with snow, um, you get more piled in your driveway. We have problems with parking, we lose parking in the street. Um, so that is um, actually an ordinance for residential driveways to be 24 feet or less. <coughs> you can always apply for a variance and see what the council decides. I was going to say, visit with our staff or council and we'll take a look at the situation. Anyone else in the audience like to take your turn? There you go. Kevin Trevansky. My sister lives on the corner of 3rd and 5th. I'm here on her behalf. Um, the only thing i got to say, that's kind of outside. Um, everyone's saying they don't want the street to go through on 4th because of safety. But at the same time, you're also saying you don't want sidewalks. Sidewalks uh, give you the safety that that would take away, like you said. So, I mean, I'm for the street to go through because fire safety, like very tall said. You know, your kids choking, they go to the wrong side. That would be a minute between life and death. But you're afraid that a car will go too fast, but they can do something about that. So. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to say something? Otherwise, I'll give Rose her turn again and for one more time, and I'll give her just say a little bit. Well, when the Rose gets done, now, baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, the only reason uh, 531 Fourth Avenue Southeast. The only thing I had to say was we have to park on Sixth Street. Um, my husband, he cannot, he can't walk very far. He's got severe back problems. Um, and so for groceries, we went ahead and purchased a wagon with the bigger tires, but we're going to have to, when we go to the house and get it, we're going to have to go across the neighbor's yard and then come back across the neighbor's yard. Now, is that going to cause problems? Some of these rules are going to be real honest with you. We've run into these exact same things in every project. And somehow, by the grace of God and all the good people that work for us, we have figured out a solution on each and every one of them we really have. We've made it work for everybody. Because uh, we got... All, that's all I can tell you on that yeah. for sure right now. That we because we do, got big, the, yeah. the wire tires so it wouldn't leave marks on the grass or anything. Yeah. So We will do our darnest to make this work for each and every one of you. We're concerned about each and every one of you also. Gloria? Yeah, I was just wondering, um, I was thinking back on Pauline, do you know, Mayor, do you remember Pauline Fontaine that used to live on the far east corner down there? Probably. And then down to Bissonette's, yeah. Mark and Sue Bissonette's. Yeah. The sidewalk goes down that far, then it quits. Yeah. I was wondering that on Fifth Avenue, then on the other side, there is no sidewalk no. on Martha Nutting side in that area. Harvey Nash. I was wondering, could if it came down to it, could we just have one sidewalk on one side of the block? Like we started out, this is if all we, for if it came down to it. This is everything you've seen that I can hear is proposed. We're going to make a vote here in a little bit when we close this public hearing, but just if we're going to move forward with the proposed. But nothing is done for sure until the final bids are accepted. So I mean, it can all have something happen in between if it has to. If we haven't, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you we're going to make those decisions tonight. We haven't even moved ahead with the proposal to 
so that we concur with the need and plans for the reconstruction, but we do have one concern. The intended path of the sidewalks based on our first-hand observations of the 4th Street sidewalk along the side of our property is not fully realized due to the speed of the snow plows. This results in a substantial amount of snow, including large, hard chunks of snow from the street being thrown onto the sidewalk. 4th Avenue Southeast, 4th Street Southeast are both very wide, is it feasible to provide sufficient space for traffic and parking by slowing down and not plowing all the way to the curb where there are sidewalks? What he's talking about is plowing the travel lane, not the parking lanes on either side. We hope that by some means, more attention is given to reducing the amount of snow thrown onto the sidewalks when the streets are plowed. Apart from this concern, we are very thankful that the street is finally being repaired. Lincoln and Carol Hartman. Ready for the record? I will add one thing to the record. The sidewalk he's speaking of on the side of his house. Because of a tree concern when we did that, he asked us if we could re reconfigure the sidewalk, which we did, which put the sidewalk very close to the curb, which is this going to put snow on the curb? I mean, so I mean, we worked with him on the tree situation, like some of you are asking. We can rearrange stuff, but it does create another problem down the road for the homeowner. So I just want that into the record also. Any other questions or concerns? Otherwise, I'm going to close this public hearing. I thank you all very much for attending your input. We're back to the regular meeting. Now, anyone that's welcome to stay if they would like to finish off this meeting. We should probably just comment because it did come up uh, really quick on the street acquisition. And obviously comments came in about cities got to act logically. The reason we're looking at Mr. Ware's property is it was an opportunity while this project was going on to now consider that. This is no mean intent to pick on Mr. Ware. Sean and I have had a couple cordial meetings with him to discuss these options. Uh, we do want his opinion. We've just given this as an option for the council con to consider. And just so you know the city's position, 
There are basically three reasons. One is, obviously, the project is going through the neighborhood. It was an opportunity to look at it. Uh, the second reason is infrastructure upgrades could take place all the way through. So that's another reason we're at least looking at it. The um, next reason is maintenance issues. Obviously, it came up from some of you about garbage uh, trucks. Uh, we obviously go down there with our plows. It's tough to turn around. The street sweeper, the leaf blower, or leaf vac. And so we look at some ease for all of you and us on that. And then we have looked at that easing a little congestion up by Bonner, at least with non-school traffic. Um, obviously, Bonner will always be heavy in school drop-offs and pickups. But if some of the traffic that's just going by, and as you know, it's mainly neighbors that are going into the different neighborhoods, that's probably the traffic that might come through fourth. The school traffic's still going to go to fifth because they got to get to Bonner. So we don't anticipate a huge highway of traffic going through. It'd be similar to other residential streets uh, that you see around town. And then just one clarification, because it wasn't quite right uh, from Mr. Ware. Um, there was not a true 60 years of city employment uh, from him. And uh, it just takes some simple math with his age now, when he quit the service of the city, if you take 60 years back from that, the city would have had to hire him at about age seven. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope people take that into consideration as you consider comments from his side. And Sean and I have met with him. We respect Mr. Ware's um, uh, feelings. We respect his uh, length of time there. And if the city council does decide to go ahead, we do have to make a fair offer to him. And the other thing we looked at is it would open up a couple lots of development for him. Uh, the elevator has already expressed an interest in maybe taking the backside uh, to help him or an heir, because um, we respect his decision that he might not have any use for that today. But we have to look in the future, and that's what came up from some of you. Can the city guys look at future things? And so that's the reason we're taking a look at it now. As I was saying, we're back to the general business, but if you would like to stay, you can. If you prefer to leave, you can move on. Thank you. 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 The next step in this process would be to adopt the resolution ordering the improvements and preparations of plans. This is ordering the plans based on the feasibility study and the comments received at the public hearing. The resolution needs to be passed by four minutes vote as it is a public improvement. If passed, it is expected to an advertise for this in January of 19 with a bid opening date of February of March of 19. So the council action requested approve or deny resolution ordering improvements and preparations of plans for 2019 Street Utility Improvements, CIP 2019. So we have a motion. We have a second. What is the motion? Proposed plan. Second. Jenna, how hard is it to shift the boulevard, the, the boulevard? The boulevard width. Yeah. We can work with that. Um, like I said, we can vary that to the six feet. Um, once we get skillful information in it, we're able to look at it with what's existing out there. Just six feet, the, the, the least amount we can roll? Um, no. However, when you build a four foot, then you're getting even more snow on there, and we will definitely not be making the standard for 12% for any of the driveways. I can say that I definitely want to get moving on the project, but I, I would either want to look at seeing if we can do a six foot boulevard. Quite frankly, looking at the maps, I think most of the trees that everybody thinks they're going to lose are going to be fine. Just uh, compared to some of the other sidewalks, but there could be some. But I would favor looking at the six foot and seeing if it's possible to do just one side for the road and the sidewalk. And I don't know what it is about sidewalks either because I can't decide if I 
like them or not. So I, I know I'm always weighing on this, but I don't see the need for both sides. I don't hardly ever see the need for both sides. So. I guess I could, if there could be a motion to have a workshop after the TOCO survey has been completed to look at the design and make a final decision on the design. That would allow us to get moving on still right now? <clears throat> Adjustments can be made to you know to the plan from now until the time it goes out. For well, that's the only concern, though. I just don't want to blindly vote on something and all of a sudden, hey, Craig, you voted for it already, and you're, yeah. you know, you're stuck. What? Well, I was just gonna say, if you approve the resolution as is, and we're all kind of commenting on that, it at least lets the engineer put down in the exact format where these proposed things would go. But at any point in time, you can pull those. So if you saw that, like what was brought up tonight, just too many trees are gonna be affected, we right. really wanna keep those. That section or that area or that component could be pulled. So it's not a definite full-on commitment tonight. Um, it just gives us the ability to design it for the benefit of the residents and you all. Okay, that makes me feel better. It's just hard because you yeah. come out, you, you run for a spot like this, it's, you're supposed to try to be a voice for people and all I hear is no. Say yes. I mean, yeah, we still have the chance. And, you know, you were talking like in November, December, that we can take a look at this again and, like, say, pull some of the stuff out of there. And, right. We or, haven't we haven't done that before, but I have. Our final blessing. Yep, I have done it in other cities to have more of a working meeting, kind of at the sixty percent. And I think on this completed. project, the way I saw um, it, I think we should. And where we can look at things all together, um, and then. Nothing's final and approved and going to bids until you guys accept the final plans. So that's proposed to be in January. Um, so this, it's not moving forward until you've accepted the plans and specs in January and you agree with what's there in the design. This is basically going to give the engineers the opportunity to start the survey, do the plans and specs so we can look at them and see if we want them that way. Right. So but his, his motion suffices for all that as is, right? Jenna, one more question. Yep. Just looking at these, when, when you unlock this, these neighborhoods, is there a, if, if say we want to stick with a sidewalk like some of them had the idea on one side, mm -hmm. is that, is there a, does that suffice? Like, is it possible to do one side? Is there more room on one side than the other or not? Uh, or, yeah, when we get, the topographic survey back, we know definitely where everything is and can lay it out better defined. I mean, this is done off of an aerial. So it's, aerials are not perfect um, for fitting the scale. Um, they are off of it. So when you look at it and you see a house or a tree in a certain location, it might be off by a few feet. Um, so when we actually get that survey and we have a real base to work off of, um, then we can look at the true impacts that are there for slopes of driveways, for trees, how close we are to homes, and everything, and have it more defined. You guys live on the same side of the street? Opposite no. side. We live on the either side or the odd side of the street? The odd side, 421. We're on the either side. <laughs> <laughs> The other thing we look at if we're only putting one side of the street is connectivity. So yeah. we'll be looking at future, even though it wasn't done on 4th Avenue to the north how many years ago, at some point something will be done up there. Um, so we, when we look at these projects, we're looking at this piece and how it connects into the future planning for the entire town and for the entire public. I know it gets really personal because it's in everybody's front yards, um, but it is something that we have to look for to of how it affects everyone in the future. The one comment I want to make is the number one complaint we hear is they don't go anywhere. They don't go anywhere. Every single year that's what we hear, they don't go anywhere. And that's because we don't start you know, we, we, one year we'll do it, the next year we get pressured, and I'm not trying to offend anybody, but we get pressured and then we don't, and then we have this hodgepodge of what we've done the last how many years, and then they don't know where people are right. 
where if you have, if we start something and stick to it and flow through there, you get some some flow going with it, and people will get <coughs> some rocks at that point, more well, so than they do. Like tonight, I'll be honest, everyone was worried about traffic. Well, if they're, so, if they're worried about traffic, the sidewalk should really deviate a lot of it foot traffic. I mean, mm -hmm. um, yes. just one comment. Uh, during yeah, construction exactly and, and people's concern about not being able to walk to where their cars would be parked, if there actually was a sidewalk there, that wouldn't be torn out right away, and they would have a place to walk to get to their cars when they are inconvenienced. Okay. I don't know if you allow any other comments at this point or not. I really don't want to. Is that going to take less than 30 seconds? Oh, okay. No, the foot traffic, I don't think, is the concern about the sidewalk issue. We understand that. Um, the other other thing, and I'm, I'm everybody's left now, but I'm just speaking on behalf of everybody here, we're the people paying for this. We ask that you would take that into consideration. You're paying, but You're all I, paying. I don't disagree with you. You're paying for 25% of it. The rest of us are paying into the 75% also. You have to understand that. But you still, it's still taxpayer money someplace. Exactly. exactly. It always has been, always been. Exactly. I can't disagree. We've got a first on this Great. motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it, considering that we can still look into things. So. We have a motion with the first and the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Thank you for your attendance. Now we're going to finish the rest of the meeting. You can stay if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> you can do what you want. And thank you for your experience. You guys work out with that sidewalk. We have to work out with that sidewalk. Yeah, put it on the east side. Put it on the east side. <laughs> 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 All right, that faces Mayor Staff's assault report. Tonight, the city would like to send their sympathies to the families of Bev Brandt, Lori Half, Steve, Steve Staub, Melvin Verby Hess, Dick Mann, Edith Knutson Noble, Gary Campion, and Maurice Sin. Congratulations to Bill and Marge Rammers on their 50th wedding anniversary. Also on that same street, happy 70th birthday to Hoggy. <laughs> if you don't know who Hoggy is, just head on up there. I bet there's a party going on right now. <laughs> National Night Out was a big success. We'd like to thank all the deputies and Deputy Stralo, Sheriff's Department. Big thanks also goes out to our fire department for making the appearance, which was a bigger hit than fire department sheriffs were, I gotta say that, they were a bigger hit than Brent was, or Bill was, <laughs> or myself. They were, the kids loved the other ones. They don't pay any attention to us. <laughs> Sturtville is a good town yet. No matter what you heard tonight, we're a good town. That's, I'm sending a special thanks out to our Villa Reichel, with a very much heartfelt letter that she put in. If you didn't read it this week, Sturtville Star, she put a very nice letter thanking all the staff, everyone in this community that makes this community run, the staff, the council, the fire department, the police, she just did a wonderful job. It's a nice reminder to all of us that what we do at this table does make a difference for somebody. Ron Barber let us know that two weeks ago, and I'm sure most of you know Ron Barber, Channel One came out to his garden with five to seven volunteers to pick all the veggies. The city doesn't charge Ron for the use of the community gardens because he donates all of his produce to someone, either Channel One or churches or whatever. This year they took off of there 189 pounds of green beans, 104 pounds of yellow beans, 27 pounds of beets, 6 pounds of dill, which I don't believe it or not, that is a pile of dill. Uh, 54 pounds of onions, and we got yellow beans again, but I, that's got to be, I'm going to say the purple beans this time. 20, 24 pounds of that. A grand total of 380 pounds of produce off the, that he produced and was given to Channel 1. So. Big hands of Ron Barber for the hard work and That's all I've got. I'll take this to the city administrator's report. Uh, reports in your packet. Just got one item. My second bullet point there under project updates. Uh, the community survey came back wanting us to expand our uh, community calendar on the website. Some of you have suggested that. I just put down some things. What, what would you like us to add to it? Or do you want us to use a request slip so that 
Uh, obviously, we would always try to do chamber things, city things, and foundation things as like three base areas. But then it was like, okay, how far do you expand into the city groups, the uh, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts? The, uh, and so we just wanted some feedback from you so that we can get added things to it, and we'll start taking on those. I'll uh, give you my quick feedback, yeah. even though it's getting to be a late evening. Yep. I would request that we somehow put out on a Facebook page that any of these groups that would like us to entertain putting their, say, benefit yeah. auctions or whatever on the website, do contact us to give us the correct information. And I would say if they want to go through that step to contact us, we'll work with them to see what we can do. <laughs> And that would help us out a lot, rather than us trying to know what's all going on with any individual group. I don't know what anybody else here thinks. Yeah, I wouldn't expect the city to just go out and search for stuff to... But you would be against the Legion being able to contact them and say, hey, we got a benefit going on. Oh, yeah, this or, or yeah. an Easter okay. hunter or, yep. or whatever, yeah. Because when we started, I was the one that told our staff to uh, be a little more conservative, because how are we going to know everything going on, and I didn't want to offend the group's feelings. But now as people are using our website, and as you're seeing, social media is huge, this is a perfect opportunity to add to it. So that would be a great way to help us out. If they request us, we'll... Uh, we'll yeah, that, that form, I, I just looked at it too, uh, to add an event. And I used to put out advertisements for the Mid-City Barbecue, and every city calendar does about the same thing. So if they don't contact us... Yeah. Sorry, well, you have an application do? on there. Right, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah, that's, that's good. More. I like it. Yeah, I think if we promote it more, and yeah. and we watch other people's Facebook pages too, that's, that's a big help. And I like your idea about if they give us the info, yeah. then we can't always be accused of a spelling error or something yeah. like that. Yeah. This is what we got. Yeah. yeah, right from the. Yeah, the and I think you know we can let people know on Facebook if they you know or if we see something on Facebook that they got the opportunity to fill out this application, so we get the right information. All right, anything else, Bill? Uh, nope, that should do her. I'll take us to our finance director's report, Barb. Um, I put the preliminary budget books for you to review. Um, we do have a meeting, uh, a workshop at 5.30 on the 28th. That's at, before our council meeting. Um, Mr. Byer will be there to give a short presentation and on the park board. But we do have his, uh, the park board's rec uh, request is included in the in the book. August twenty eighth, correct? August twenty eighth at five thirty. Okay. Anything else, Barb? Nope, that's it. Okay. Public works director, Sean. Uh, just one thing I wanted to highlight out of there is I've been working on our fuel tanks. We have fuel tanks, two two thousand gallon tanks that are in ground. Uh, they've been in ground for thirty six years with a life expectancy of thirty. Our monitoring system is disabled right now. It's not working. Uh, they want $10,000 to upgrade because it's outdated. I am looking at getting those tanks tore out of the ground because they're the end of their life anyway and replacing with above ground tanks that we don't have double wall that we don't have to monitor. I'm getting pricing on those. They're coming in around $11,000 for the tanks. Both everything installed, all brand new, where it's $10,000 just for the monitor. So I'm leaning towards two new above ground tanks without all the NPCA regulations. Makes life a lot easier. Sean, do you have to remove them? Can you fill in the sand? Ah, uh, we have to remove them. You do have to remove them? Yep. You got one year after the date to decommission the move them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we have all the equipment there. I've spoke with a couple of contractors. We will hammer the cement, do all the lifting up. We just have to have someone there that's licensed to do it, and he'll look over our work, and we'll have to pay them for that service, but we'll do all the work pulling them off everything ourselves. With the, with the above ground tanks, do you have to put a fence around that or anything? No, they're double walled, everything sealed, contained. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about stuff, your vandalism. Well, you're, everything's locked up. Oh, down there you go. Yeah, yeah so it's a gate, gate. Well, if we, don't, if we don't even have a gate there anymore, but on part of this, the tank will be locked and sealed, and they won't be able to get at it, plus the power shut off inside the building, okay. so they don't have any power to turn a pump on or anything. Okay. How big a tank should I about? We're going to 1,000, and I talked to... Uh, CHS who delivers our, and they're actually the ones that said, just go a thousand gallon. He said, we'll put you on a weekly thing where we just come by and top you off once a week. And then you don't have to worry about how much, you know, so you're going to them and gas that's above ground and just yep. throw it good. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, well, as you brought that up about the tanks, hey, somebody mentioned something about uh, SA. Have them tanks ever been removed down there? 
Not that I'm aware of. And that the state of Minnesota is aware of them and it's on there. It's, it's their issue to handle. I know Greg has called the state of Minnesota a number of times and asked about them. And it's, it's not a city thing. It's, it it so goes why, under why didn't, MPCA. Why doesn't the state do something about it? You'll have to ask them. I'm sure it's personnel and person finances. And, 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 and they're swamped with other things no matter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. Talk to Carla. She'll keep working. Any other questions for Sean? Thanks, Sean. Tell the guys, see they get the signs worked on again. That looks great. The brush looks good, stuff. too. All right. Jenna, city engineer's report. <laughs> <laughs> the lengthy report is in your packet. <laughs> yeah, that's my longest like question. Hear you tell them all about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Any problems anywhere? Or? I think we've addressed the problem. <laughs> um, otherwise, just updating you on on all of the various projects. This final punch list on the wastewater plant. Are we going to go to talking to them manually pretty soon, or are we going to just keep? Um, on the wastewater plan. We have With the letters that have been sent out, they are now aware that we are, again, enforcing liquidated damages right. until they have finished all of their work and paperwork. Thank you for that. We have accomplished most of the, the work is done. It's yeah. more the paperwork stuff now. Is all, we have to all right. Any questions for the engineer? What do you, how do you think this year's project is going? Um, the contractor has been very good to work with. Um, timeline, we are behind. The majority of that is due to weather. Um, can we finish it this year? Yes. All right. Thank you, John. Well, no library direct report, no fire chief report. We commission board reports, chamber of commerce, nothing tonight. EDHRA, nothing. Hey, that's me. Yeah, <coughs> we went to that meeting. Bill and I went down to this one chapter this morning too. Interesting, there were some interesting findings. They're going to put all, they're going to highlight all that to send it out to us on a little computer trip to the before we you know, all that fancy stuff. Mm -hmm. There was quite a spectacle going on there. My next. I fell asleep, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. We had a question for Council Member Huffington. Oh, that's right. That's right. Econometrics technology. Yeah, they were wondering if you're supposed to work under econometrics, and we told them Dick would take care of it. <laughs> By Friday, they said. Yeah. By Friday, yeah. If you got a question, they need you questions on, on this week? econometrics <laughs> technology. That's the day after tomorrow. <laughs> Finance, we just up there, up there, yeah. told us we got a meeting before on the 28th, 28th. Library? Park board? Uh, we met Monday. Um, the signs are in the parks now, save for one. Which right? one's not there? Um, it's the one that wasn't there before out of the Palm The field. second entrance of Barricade. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And Tennis Court was crack built. And well, that's new benches. That's all I want to Oh, yeah. We ordered some new benches. Okay. So we're at. Um, uh, well, Which park, I mean, where are they going? Um, some are going to Florence because there were some that got taken out when we did the pond. Oh, really? They were in bad shape, so they're going to be replaced there, and then we've been replacing some of the older ones around the trails and stuff. So, oh, okay. One of them is a, was a donation from a family, so okay. nice. we're just going to add to that. Good. Thank you. Personnel? Thank you. Thank you. Sam Atchis is uh, resigned from his library page and moving on to better, different things. <laughs> so we will be advertising yeah. for that um, in the next two mm -hmm. weeks. We will be? Mm -hmm. It's a part time. Huh? It's a needed position? I was directed to advertise. Okay. <laughs> That's part time? 
per yeah. day. 10, 10 12 hours a day. A week. Public safety. He left on us too. Public works. Roll call. Uh, meeting Monday, so no report tonight. Stu 180. Nothing going on. Everything cool? Hurry up. Some of us need to take a nap before we go to work. All right. <laughs> Transit advisory committee. I take it no report tonight from them. Communications. We got the, oh yeah, the ribbon cutting out here at the airport. That's coming up on the 22nd. 4 to 6 p.m. You're all invited. Bill, did you have anything about the fairway? The I, I sent that out to all of your emails. Same day, isn't it? Yep, yeah. it's in the morning. And fairway yeah. might have sent individual ones, yeah. too. Okay. All right, that takes us to the open mic. Sure. Okay. City Council welcomes and encourages participation with community members. Please keep in mind that comments must be pertinent to city business. It must adhere to data privacy rules. No employees may need to be used. Please do not expect action from the council. If you need to any concerns or else request that your comments be limited to four minutes. Speakers will be recognized only once. At this time, we ask that anyone who would like to address the city council please step up before you take your name and address. No one wants to use it. That's <laughs> the last motion of the night. We've got a motion to adjourn. We got a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Both adjourn. Thank you.